You know, over the years, how I think about health has changed a lot. When I went into medicine, I had a view of health as being, you know, you get sick and the doctors and the teams will help you get better. I had a very narrow view of it. I'm in the acute care sector, and I really appreciate how committed the providers are to the patients, but I also recognize that this is just a small slice of their life, and really where their health is, it's experienced outside the corridors of our hospital. 50% of health outcomes are attributable to social determinants of health. The social factors in your life, like where you live, the employment, the income level, what race you are, if you're indigenous or not, or if you're not white, education, housing, food security. In a way, our health is socioeconomically produced, but our economy is all around the healthcare sector, and that's where the focus is on innovation and technology. We're all having to deal with increasing technology in the healthcare system that can offer newer and better treatments. What I like to see is that we're considering how much money this is going to cost. What outcomes can we expect to see improved? And what is the benefit of those improved outcomes? People may think that we do this every time we make investments in healthcare, but we don't always do that. We would never deny individuals the opportunity to avail themselves of world-class care, and I think that's an opportunity Canadians have come to expect. The difficulty is achieving the balance between fixing and basically preventing. That's where I get worried, where the focus is now, when it's broken, we will fix it. One of the most challenging moments I ever had as a health minister was one day an assistant deputy minister dropped in to say, a boy suffered MPS-6, which is one of the rarest of rare diseases. And in fact, he was the only one in British Columbia that had this disorder. The treatment was a cost of about a million dollars a year for one patient, but it was the only way this patient's needs could be addressed. The decision was to fund the treatment, and that was important that we did that. But a million dollars buys a lot of public health. Those are the kind of really gut-wrenching decisions that have to be made around the allocation of scarce dollars. Where's the real challenge is where the drug works really well, say for a cancer patient, they'll live a bit longer. So if they live for 10 years, that's wonderful. If they, on average, live three months longer, well, then you start to wonder, you know, is that worth $50,000? Is that worth $100,000? Is that a good investment of taxpayer dollars? So this contrast of emotion versus scientific rigor is challenging. One person's income is always another person's expenditure. My goal might be to improve mental health. Your goal might be to improve some sort of rehabilitation service. They're not necessarily both addressable at the same time. So there's all sorts of fundamental funding dynamics that make it difficult to make a neutral decision. We talk about the public being involved in making healthcare decisions, but the members of the public who have access to politicians that can make the case for what they might want don't include, for example, our most marginalized populations who may not have a voice. There may be other pressures on government. They are certainly may be lobbied by the private sector or pharmaceutical companies about drugs that they want to see government fund, even though that may not be the best funding decision for the population as a whole. The big challenge about prevention is being able to calculate the benefit, trying to estimate how many conditions wouldn't have happened. The other kicker in terms of prevention is that we have to actually save money. If we go into the acute care system, nothing is required of showing we save money, and yet both groups are saving lives. One has to save money, one basically spends money. The biggest frustrations, and this is putting on my pediatrician hat, is we have never known more about early child development, about conditions that foster healthy children, and where do we spend our investment downstream once the problems have happened. I think if we spent more on social determinants of health, we'd have lower rates of chronic diseases, lower rates of the risk behaviors that predispose people to chronic diseases, predispose people to mental health problems, predispose people to addiction. I do think we can do a better job with healthcare funding decisions. Are we getting the value that we should be getting from these expenditures? I think it involves getting our citizens, the people who live in our country, more engaged. It's because they hugely affect them. That's part of the conversation we should be having.